Welcome to News 3 Now This Morning. I'm Leah Lynchide. And I'm Chris Stanford. Thanks for joining us. We're going to get right to our COVID headlines this morning. We have invited Dr. A.J. Sethi once again back on the program to talk about some of those headlines. Yeah, Dr. Sethi, an Associate Professor of Population Health Sciences at UW-Madison. Dr. Sethi, waking up again early for us. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Uh, good morning, Leah. We want to start by talking about uh, Pfizer's news on the vaccine for kids. They are submitting the data on the first of two of three doses, um, hoping that this is available for the public. What's your take on that good news? Yeah, it's an unusual submission because they're breaking up the application two doses now. And when data on the third dose come in, they'll submit that later. And the urgency is because lots of kids are in the hospital because of COVID. And so they want to get that process started now. All right, now let's talk about the new variant. It popped up in Dane County. Not a big surprise here. What's this going to do for the Omicron spike? Yeah, a lot of people think this is going to cause a spike to sort of not recede as quickly. And maybe we'll have a lingering of cases a little longer. Uh, because this new BA variant, BA2 variant, uh, is more infectious. And as a result, it's going to spread and cause the epidemic to, you know, linger just a little bit longer. You know, over the past week, there's been a slew of articles, editorials mostly, uh, opinion pieces, in some major news outlets making the argument that masking in school should end once this Omicron peak ends. Um, interestingly enough, the WHO doesn't recommend masking for kids under six because they don't always wear them correctly because they're at such low risk for illness. Of course, the CDC does recommend it. What's your take on taking masks off for kids after the peak? Yeah, this has been a hotly debated topic uh, throughout the last year. And, you know, after every wave, there are calls for removing those mandates. I would say that, you know, masks aren't going to be useful if they're not being worn properly. So not having a mandate you know, has a lot of merit to it if they're not being used. On the other hand, it makes sense to wear a mask to block transmission. It does work when kids wear it properly, but young kids have a hard time doing that. And then there's effects of mask use in general. So I appreciate the argument. It's very, just very difficult to know what to exactly do. Yeah, this is a topic of discussion in our family at home, Dr. Sethi, because I have a three-year-old, a five-year-old, and a seven-year-old. And for my three-year-old, uh, if she's not wearing a mask and she's going to school full time, but the older kids are wearing masks, I mean, there again is that risk of transmission. So when you mix yeah. in those age groups uh, and not have everybody follow the same guidance, isn't that you know tricky or won't that cause problems? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think you, it's best if everybody in the household is wearing masks when they can to protect the household from uh, getting COVID you know, one entry point will spread that pretty quickly within a home because you're not always wearing a mask when you're in your own home around your family. Yeah, I mean, this I'm a proponent of masks for kids, but I recognize the challenges in making that actually work. I'll say that for vaccination, when you look at five to 11 year olds, only 20% across the state have been vaccinated despite that vaccine being authorized for that age group. If we can get vaccination rates higher for kids, uh, you know, we'll see lower transmission in schools in general. Uh, and as the Omicron spike recedes, I think there will be more merit to not asking kids to necessarily wear masks. All right, Dr. Ajay Sethi, again, taking the time this morning to break down these COVID headlines. Give us some really uh, needed context on what's going on in the news. We really appreciate it, Dr. Sethi. Thanks, Leah.